Welcome everybody. Um, thank you for coming along today um, for our industrial relations webinar. We have got Tanya Harris, our employment advisor with us um, to have a chat about all the changes in industrial relations and what might be coming. Um, if you've got any questions at all um, during the session, um, please put them in the um, Q&A section just at the bottom of your screens and we'll try to get to these um, close to the end of the webinar. So welcome, Tanya. Um, I hope you're well. And uh, I thought we might kick off with, I guess, some of the current issues um, that members are probably concerned about. And I guess the top one for, for me at the moment is the minimum wage decision, which is due to be handed down quite soon. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you expect with regards to this and just how that decision making process works? Um, the Fair Work Commission, that they usually hand down the um, minimum wage decision by early June, which gives um, employers nearly a month to Im implement it. Um, last year's increase was 4.6% and 5.2% for lower level employees. Um, the previous increase was significantly lower at 2.5%. Um, the increase generally generally starts from the first full pay period on or, on or after the 1st of July each year. Um, employers can get confused when the increase starts. So I thought I'd give you an example. Um, say a business pays its employees weekly and their pay period starts on a Monday, the next pay period commencing on or after the 1st of July for this business is Monday the 3rd of July. This means that an employee receives the wage increase for any work from Monday the 3rd of July onwards and not before. Um, so people don't have to be worried about paying on the 1st of July. No, and you don't have to sort of like, you, you need the information, I guess, at the end of that pay period, whether it's a week or a fortnight to do the calculation. And um, the members probably remember, um, you know, because we do this every year, I mean, usually we get the announcement, I think it's sort of, you know, early in June, is that about right? Um, when we, we get the decision? Yeah, that, early um, June, the announcement. Yeah. But we, yeah, we can't put it out until the Fair Work release a lot of the figures because they're, they're roundings, often they'll round up, and so we can't be a sent out. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. So we, we never know the final details because obviously we want to get it exactly right for members until, uh, you know, those couple of days after after the, the end of the financial year. Um, but we'll keep members updated on a regular basis um, as we lead up to that so that you can expect to see that from us. But it's an interesting one this year. I mean, I was just sort of reflecting, talking to Tanya before the webinar about um, you know the size of the increase that the unions are asking for this year, which is seven percent, which we just think is extraordinary. I mean, we're very cognizant that um, we want our um, our employees to be able to you know keep keep up with the cost of living, but at the same time, um, our retailers, you know, who are often not very different to some of their employees. The costs that they're seeing in their business, and certainly from our perspective, um, we'd feel a lot more comfortable if that number was, you know, um, a three or a four, um, and maybe rather than sort of, you know, having a big increase this year, that it's it's sort of spread across a couple of years rather than um, rather than all in one hit with a really big increase. And I mean, if I look at um, around some of the other um, business associations, you know, I note that. Um, that the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry are asking for a 3.5% increase plus the 0.5% super increase that's already, already locked in. Um, so around a 4% increase. Um, Cosboa are looking for around a 4% increase. The Australian Retailers Association are a little bit lower. With, uh, they're looking um, for a 3.8% increase. So certainly we'd probably feel comfortable if it was, you know, around that sort of number and um, and obviously, um, you know, spreading it over a couple of years rather than um, having that massive 7% increase would be a, a better outcome. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other questions I was just going to ask you about, Tanya, is um, so when you get a minimum wage increase, how does it impact the General Retail Industry Award and the Road Transport Award that most of our members operate under? Is it like the whole amount gets passed through or I'm, I'm never completely certain how it sort of calculates out? The whole amount gets passed gets passed through because that's the minimum wage. So if, if somebody's on, say, 23.38, they'll 
they will get the four, say the increase is 4%, they will get the 4%. Okay, yeah. So, and is that across all the different levels? Yes, that's across all the different levels. But but last year, because they gave the two different increases, so lower level casual, lower level employees, um, which the general retail industry award wasn't a lower level, but they would get a higher increase than the higher level ones. But oh. the general retail industry award doesn't have introductory level, so that didn't apply. It'd be interesting to see what they do this year, whether they do give the two increases again no absolutely so we'll um we'll certainly be um watching that very carefully and and hoping that um the fair work commission are fairly balanced in their approach to both the needs of workers and the needs of um, small businesses in particular um so the next section i was going to talk about is some of the recent law changes um as many of the members are probably likely aware there have been many changes to fair work laws with the introduction of the secure jobs better pay act in december last year and i thought we might do a bit of a recap with tanya on some of these um and um and maybe just get tanya to run through them as a bit of a reminder for members about some of those changes some of the recent changes include prohibiting pay secrecy so you can no longer put confidentially confidential reality clauses into contracts um, because you can't stop employees talking about their pay. Um, job advertisements can't include pay rates that would breach the Fair Work Act. So in other words, you can't pay under award and say if the pay rate was $25, you can't put you're going to pay $20. Um, prohibiting of sexual harassment in the workplace. Um, that will come into the work health and safety um, aspect now. Um, new protected attributes under the Fair Work Act um, in relation to anti-discrimination is breastfeeding, gender equity and intersex status. Um, changing the objectives in the Fair Work Act to include promoting job security and gender equi equality. Um, at, in the AUNA communications a while ago, we, we provided information on this and we there was links that you could actually um, click on to get further details. So we might send that out again, Ben. I think that's a really good idea. I was just sitting here thinking, gosh, that's a lot of changes. And uh, and I um, struggle to get my head around half of them. So I'm sure the members do. So yes, I think um, we, we definitely need to send that out again. And there's more to come. There is, there is. And so um, so I, I guess let's talk about that, um, that some of those upcoming um, changes. Um, you know, the federal government have been pretty busy and so we might focus on at least three of those changes today to update members, which are the flexible work arrangements, parental leave and paid family and domestic violence leave. So maybe if you could take us through those, Tanya. I'll just give you a brief overview. The flexible work arrangement changes take effect from 6th of June, which is not far away. Um, more employees will be able to access flexible work arrangements. These are employees or a member of their immediate family or household experience family, experiencing family and domestic violence. Um, they will now be able to access it. Employees who are pregnant will also be able to access it. An example of... Um, Example of flexible work arrangements, not including these two I've just mentioned, is um, say uh, Christy wants to start work at 8:30 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. so she can take her son to preschool. She can request flexible working arrangements to help care for her son. Um, employers have new obligations before they can refuse a request from an employee. It's very important. Um, they must provide a written response. Um, and if they're refusing, it must be based on reasonable business grounds. If the employee doesn't agree, this is um, actually a change as well. They can refer a dispute and they can refer it to the Fair Work Commission. So right. it's very important um, that employers follow proper process and we'll get something out to employers um, on this shortly. Um, okay. Our will. Um, the second um Oh, just before I move on to the second one, a reminder that casual employees can also make a request if they've been working for the same employer regularly and systematic for at least 12 months. And there's the reasonable expectation of continuing work. So it's just important that employers follow the proper process because you wouldn't want a dispute to go to the Fair Work Commission. Um, parental leave changes are also taking effect on 6th of June. Um, parental leave pay and dad and partner pay are combining into one payment. Um, and so it will increase to 20 weeks. 
from 18 so that added partner pay will be included in the payment. Other okay. challenges are allowing partnered employees um, to, cl to claim a maximum of 20 weeks, 20 weeks pay between them, um, introducing a 350,000 family income limit for paying the parental leave. At the moment, there's not a limit. Expanding the eligibility rules for father or partners to claim paid parental leave pay, um, making the whole payment flexible so that eligible eligible employees can claim it in multiple blocks until the child into until the child turns two. So the employees would have employees would have to take that into consideration too, because they may want it at, at you know not in one lump. Um, removing the requirement. Um, to return to work, to be eligible for the entitlement. At the moment, people had to say, I'm returning to work, it, even if they knew they weren't, whereas they won't, they'll, they'll still get it, which is good. Um, and interestingly enough, um, there'll also be changes to extending unpaid parental leave, including if they want to extend to two years, um, including giving the Fair Work Commission the power to deal with disputes on this as well. So it's really important that employers follow proper process with this as well. Um, mm. We'll put something out on that as well um, because you don't want to be dealing with the Fair Work Commission with a dispute um, yep. because it, won't, um, it doesn't cost the employees very much at all, um, maybe $50 um, to lodge a dispute. So you want to do it amic amicably if you can. And the third, um, the third change is paid family and domestic violence leave, you may have read about this. Um, from 1st of August, 2023, all employees of small business employers, that's employers with less than 15 employees, can access 10 days paid leave. Um, from 1st of February, which has passed, non-small business employers can access 10 days paid leave. Most owner employers have less than 15 employees, don't they, Ben, I think? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yep, that's usually... Unless they've got a few different news agents or something, then they might go over the yeah, yes. there might be a few, but but not many. Yep. And the paid family and domestic violence leave includes part time and casual employees. Um, that they, they'll be entitled to the full day, full ten days up front, um, and the leave won't accumulate from year to year, so it goes back to zero every year. Um, um, will Anna will short, like, shortly be providing a family and domestic leave policy to members, which will include information on reasons an employee can take the leave, because you'll need to know that, uh, evidence requirements, um, the payment and confidentiality, um, because you can't email anything, you can't have anything because um, in relation um, to family and domestic violence leave, apparently the partner can often, often has access to the emails, um, so there can be no record. The PACEC can't mention family and domestic violence leave. So I'd recommend to members that they check out the policy once it's out there. Yeah, sure. it's a really complicated one, that one. So I think it's going to be really important that we, we get that policy out there so that they can understand it. And you wouldn't want to be roped into it if you'd actually ac accidentally sent an email mm. to, a, um, to an employee about it and that part, the, you know, the partner with the, that was allegedly, um, you know, domestic violence read it yeah. yeah yeah so definitely one um where we've got to be very very careful so um so we'll get that out um in due course and and maybe um do a little bit more education on that because it's going to be one that all the members can have to get their head around and so um i guess the next thing the federal government is planning further reforms to um fair work laws um this year to be introduced in the second half of 2023 and two of those proposed reforms are the criminalisation of wage theft. And I think at the moment that's already a criminal offence in Queensland and Victoria, I think, am I right in saying that? Um, but we, the government had made it clear that they were looking to make that a national, um, yeah. the criminalised wage theft nationally, and also changes for casual employment arrangements. So I wonder if you could take us through your thoughts on, um, on those two to tranches of, um, of new changes that will come in the second half of the year? The criminalisation of wage theft, um, that is workers should receive the wage, wages they are legally entitled to. Um, and, it's, and, and if they're not paid correctly, um, they have fair workers saying that they will have an unfair competitive advantage over businesses um, by deliberately underpaying wages. 
And so if they're deliberately underpaying wages, there will be there will be criminal penalties. If it's an honest mistake, there won't be. Okay. Yeah, and so you would have to be quite clear that it was an honest mistake um, and that you weren't, say, for instance, paying $15 or, you know, um, an hour or something because you would have the unfair competitive advantage. Yep. Yes, and so it's really important that honest honest mistakes are fine. You've missed a, you know, say you missed a pay increase or something by a couple of weeks, You, but you would always have to catch up. Yeah. You should have to back pay. Um, but it's more systemic abuse of the system that would likely incur a, a criminal charge. Yes. And I've even known, I've read from Fair Work where um, they pay the employees, but then the employee had to pay back a certain amount. Right. They slipped looked correct, but in fact they weren't because they were having to pay something back. Um, not, you know, I've never come across that. Well, never been told that with the owner members. Um, no, no, but it is a significant change, and obviously, it just again it highlights why it's so important now to get on top of your compliance. And that was going to be the next section I was going to talk about. Is you know, um, get some okay. tips from before you. Before we go on, we've got to talk about the the proposed reform to casual employment. Oh, we, we do too. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> getting ahead of my the, the federal government's proposing to seek to redefine what it means to be a casual employee. Um, the federal Labor government don't like casual employment um, because they don't get leave. Um, mm. And so there's nothing, really there's nothing out on it at the moment. Um, so we, as soon as something comes out, um, we'll advise our members. Uh, it will be interesting to see what the changes are. As I found dealing with our um, news agents, a lot, most casuals don't want to convert um, to part time or full time. They're happy to remain as a casual. And it's quite difficult. Often employers say to me, Can I make them, you know, make them convert? You can't. And so it usually, the only time is usually if they want to get a loan or something. Hmm. They will want to convert. But other than that, it's quite difficult to get them to convert. Hmm. It's interesting to see what the government come out with. Yeah, and that's where, you know, it's so important that you kind of keep records to show that you have actually done the right thing and given them the opportunity, even if they've um, they've said no. So, because um, you don't want it going against you the other way. Keep records, written records and everything. Exactly. So, um, so sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Um, so we might um, go go back now um, to um, to sort of how you know some of your tips on how it's best to actually keep up to date and compliant. Um, and I mean, firstly, I suppose um, my advice on articles that Tanya does a great job of writing for our weekly newsletter, and by you know reading all of those out of communications every Friday. Um, but it's also worth noting that once a month, um, early in the week, we always do a summary of all of those employment articles. Specifically, we pull them all out just into one summary um, employment newsletter. So look out for that one as well. And that's one that's probably worth just printing out, you know, putting next to um, on the on the counter somewhere so that you can, you know, um, read it when you get a chance and, and maybe keep those. It's a really good way of just um, staying up to date with all of those changes. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is putting out a workplace relations checklist um, after this webinar that Tanya's been working on, which has got 23 tasks for, um, for 2023, 23 tasks for 2023 is pretty good. Um, to assist you in ensuring your compliance um, and also we're going to include the federal government secure jobs better pay timeline again so that you can see what the timeline is for some of those changes so i don't know if you'd like to elaborate on any of those things tanya yeah it's really important to get it right and if you if you ever have any queries whatsoever email us at ir, IR at alna.net.au um, because it's um don't get it wrong nowadays because um, fair work can go back six years if you make a mistake. And I have found some news agents that have had to repay and it's it can be very expensive, even if it's a laundry allowance. Adding it up over your employees over six years adds up. Mm. Um, and it's really important um, to, give in, to give your employees letters of engagement so they're clear on what they are, what, you know, 
what their terms and conditions of employment are because it can be confusing. Often people too, they forget to give age increases. Um, mm. You know, there's lots of different, um, and it's not deliberate. Um, no, I find that with my two daughters work in a pizza shop and, and almost every time they have a birthday, they have to remind the owner to, to make those changes. And it's understandable. He's busy and, you know, it's um, he's, you know, not keeping track of everything mm. going on with every employee. So mm. you would think that the, um, the accounting programs would have sort of a reminder if you put the birthdays in, wouldn't you? But I don't know that they do. Um, oh, look, some of them are pretty good, but it just depends on, you know, the business and, and how um, how developed they are and their processes and so on. I mean, that's that's why I think it's really good to make the most of those bits of software because I think a lot of those things, um, you know, they can remind you to, you know, check and make those changes. Um, so it's, you know, it's, an, again, another really good point. Um, I might just sort of break from our discussion just for a second, just to remind everybody, if you do have any questions for Tanya, um, just to put them in that Q&A section at the bottom as we're going through, um, and we can come to those at the end. Um, so the next one I was going to um, talk with the members about and get um, Tanya to explain to you is, um, for those of you who really want you know, absolute peace of mind about your level of compliance. Um, Alna has developed with Tanya um, over the last 18 months or so um, an assisted employment compliance audit. Unfortunately, it's not free because it does require um, quite a bit of, of Tanya's time um, to do it on an individual basis for um, each business. Um, so it is $425 plus GST. But members, if they choose to, can participate in that audit. And um, what it does is it basically identifies any gaps in your compliance um, and you'll be provided with assistance and resources to be able to rectify those. And um, I think we've completed over 40, I think, of those audits now um, in that sort of trial period over the last 18 months. Um, and we've now obviously made that available for any members who want to um, want to avail themselves of, of that service. Um, so I don't know, if, Tanya, if you just maybe want to talk a little bit about sort of what that looks like, sort of, you know, what the processes are, how long it takes um, and, and what the outcomes are. Initially, we when, I, when we've done the audit, we've found we've found at least one issue with every single audit, uh, multiple issues with some audits. Um, and so, and it, they weren't deliberate emissions or deliberate underpayments or anything. People just didn't know. And so um, it's re it was really good because it's a really, um, it's, it's a safe environment um, for identification of non-compliant areas. And also we advise rectification. So it's only, it's very safe for the members, but it's important to get it right because you don't want fair work coming and going back um, six years. For instance, um, if if an employee opens and shuts the store, that's a level three rate, but you can pay a high duty allowance just for that component. Um, there's sort of lots of tips that we can give you um, while we're completing the audit. And we also give you, um, a, you know, a full update for your business. You let us know, um, we, we ask for your pay slips, your timesheets, um, information on your employees, um, which is two weeks, and then we ask for the records and check them. And all the people, that the 40 that have gone through it, they've all been really satisfied and really pleased that they've gone through it um, because it's identified at least one area um, that was an issue. Mm, no, it's been a really, really interesting process. And, and as you say, it's given... A lot of peace of mind I think you know obviously there's a little bit of work involved but a lot of peace of mind to those those stores that have done it that they're now completely on top of things and um, some, of them are, some of them are actually going to have a re-audit um, mm. and so that's a positive thing too because it'll be interesting to see um, how well they're going yeah because there's been changes since then so it'll be quite interesting um, you know to see how they're going now Mm, yeah, and we'll certainly be able to talk to other members about that um, once we sort of get through that process, um, you know, but it's certainly um, a great way to to, um, to really, um, you know, get on top of your compliance and, and give you a level of confidence. I know when I had my own small businesses, it was um, one of those things that just kept me up at night, just worrying about whether I'd got, you know, what I'd missed. You know, it's um, just one of those things because there's just so much 
to be on top of. Um, so it's it's really, really valuable. Um, and so if any members are interested in that service, um, just contact your AUNA state manager and, um, and they'll um, put you in touch um, with Tanya in our office in Sydney to, to get that organised. Um, See, so the other thing I was going to talk to you about, Tanya, is, um, I mean, you're dealing with members day in, day out um, with their issues on employment matters. What are some of the most common issues that you're assisting members with recently? Yeah, I looked, I looked what I've been assisting them with this month. And um, main queries were uh, members selling or buying a business. Um, that's in relation to the employees that um, they're called transferring employees, even though they may terminate them from the old employer and start with a new employer, and the employment arrangements. And that's important to get it right. Um, because you've got to know what liabilities you may be taking on. Um, this, I've also assisted with a couple of termination of employment due to serious misconduct. Um, both were, one was um, due to drinking and the other one was due to theft. And it's really important to follow a proper process or you can be up for unfair dismissal. Even if um, you know that somebody's stolen from you and you've got the CCTV footage, you've still got to follow the proper process. And if you go to unfair dismissal, dismissal, you'll pay to go away money. So mm. you just be able to do that. Um, the correct classification of employees, and like I was mentioning a moment ago, the higher duties allowance. Um, that's important to make sure you're classifying correctly. Warning information. Um, we provide template warning letters um, for misconduct and performance. And it's important you get this, this right as well. Um, mm. Because then if it's not working out down the track, you've got to have the proof um, that you have provided a warning. Letters of engagement. We provide all the letters of engagement for full-time, part-time and casual. Um, cashing out annual leave. There's certain requirements about that. Um, personal carers leave. Um, you know, what, how that can be taken and um, the notice that they have to give and the evidence requirements and long service leave requirements on termination and that very long service leave state based so that's every every single state's different and a lot of them are different time frames and the other one was evening work penalties people forget there's evening work penalties monday to friday after six and a lot of news agents forget that um so they need to remember that they've got to pay the penalty yeah, it's a, there's a lot of lot of things to think about there. It's um, it's like um, uh, all the differences between the different jurisdictions, and it's um, and just so many common problems. So um, it's it's really good to highlight those. And again, we might um, touch on a few of those again in our um, in our newsletters coming up. And so the um, last thing I was going to cover off before we check if there's any questions was around um, the Outer Employment Reference Guides. Um, so actually I've got a, a, a copy of the guide here. I don't know if everybody can see it, but if you want one of those, um, please get in contact with your general manager and we can, um, can get you a copy. And there are obviously also soft copies available on the website. And Anna developed those guides um, a year or so ago with the support of the lot. And um, they're an easy, quick reference guide that um, I guess takes the guesswork out of a lot of the compliance with your fair work obligations. And, um, and it's available free for members. So it's a really good service. And um, one of the things we've also done is with the guide, there's like a business policy guide and an employee guide that you can actually just adopt in your business, um, which makes it really easy to cover all of those business policies that you should have. Um, and then there's also an introductory guide, an employer guide, performance management guide, and a leave guide. So it makes it really easy to um, get on top of your, um, your fair work obligations. And so I was just going to ask Tanya, I suppose, just to um, take us through how you think it's best to use the guides. Um, the employee guide, Give that to your employees. If you haven't used it, give it to all your employees now and then just give it to them when you're employed, new, new staff. Um, and it's really good because it, it, they understand your expectations and also um, they also know the fair work laws and it tells them what happens. You know, you've got to get to work on time. You've got to call, um, make sure you call before work unless you're in an accident. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to present well um, and this way, then, if there is an issue down the track, 
you can say, well, you've read the policies. You know this is our, this is what we expected of you. And yeah, it quite, it was quite good for them. I think there's even something that they can sign to say to acknowledge that they've read it. And uh, and the other thing I always recommend to um, to members is you know have a copy of that employee guide and just you know leave it in the you know the, the where where your staff have their cups of tea or anything like that so that it's it's visible and the same with the business policy guide um, mm -hmm. so that they know what the standards are around use of mobile phones or harassment or um, mm -hmm those issues that they they you know um, might need to consider so that makes it really really easy and then the employer guide that includes info on recruitment um, employment information induction terms and conditions of employment so that's very useful um, you know rather than reinventing the wheel just go to that and then we we will be updating them um, shortly not quite yet because we, there's a lot of changes happening this year and we'd be continually updating but once these changes are sort of better down, we'll up, update the policy, uh, update the guides that need updating. Um, the other one is the performance management guide. And that includes information, which I was talking about before, on proper process for discipline and termination. Um, so follow that. And if you've got any queries, email, email IR at Alna. And the other one is the leave guide. And that include, includes information on annual leave, personal leave, long service leave, um, compassionate leave and any other leave. And we'll have to add the paid family and domestic leave to that. Yeah, no, we'll definitely do that when we do that update. And um, and yeah, just a reminder for all the members that the soft copy of that guide is available on the ANA website. Um, I know most members have their, their login details and they can get access to that. And if you um, do need to get your login details again, um, just contact our um, our office and we can um, we can send those out to you again so that you can get That's the also again, you know the Alna Pay summary? Um, yes. A lot of members, um, for some reason don't realise that that's on the on the website. Oh, yeah. And it's really handy because it's for, it's sort of for their industry. And so they're not looking at these a lot of pages in the award and the pay guide. They've just got, you know, the, the Anna Pay summary. Yes. And it's the laundry allowance and everything else applicable and the penalties and everything. So it's quite handy. It it really is and 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 those are you know specifically done just to suit our members. So um so definitely um if you need help getting back on the website at all, um let us know. And um, I think we're a couple of minutes over and it doesn't look like we've got any questions. Um, so I wanted to um, thank everybody for your time today to come on. I think it's been a really interesting chat. And I also wanted to thank Tanya for all the hard work that she puts into um, dealing with member issues. Uh, I think she provides a fantastic service for our members and, um, and you know, produces some great resources. And it's a, a difficult time at the moment, I think, in this employment space um, with the current government making so many changes. And so it's never been more important to get it right. So, um, so yeah, we certainly encourage um, retailers and um, distributors to take advantage of the service and, you know, help improve your, your skills and knowledge to make sure that you are compliant. So thank you again, Tanya, for all the work that you do. And um, thank you to all the members that have joined us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.